Kisu Grisham, Kisu Kukit, Kisu Quiet, Kapaniskis. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Kenshuke Tesmiet, also known as Peter White, Peter Not So White. And I come to you from the unceded Coast Salish territories of the Squamish, the Swalatooth, and the Musqueam people. So thank you for allowing me to be a guest, to play, to live, to learn on your lands, to create this podcast on your lands as well. And this week, I kind of want to touch on a subject that is so easy for a lot of people to do, especially with uh, social media. And I heard this story once, and it was uh, it's a really good story. It talks about our minds, and it talks about how our minds are gardens. Everyone, everyone's mind is a garden. And if you know anything about gardens, then you know that it takes work, it takes commitment, it takes dedication and love to grow flowers you know plants food whatever right whatever you want to grow that's going to flourish your garden you need to work on but there's always those weeds you know the dandelions and all such a sort of things that, that people call weeds that just grow on their own no matter what they're just if you, if you don't take care of your garden and pl- pluck all the weeds out, eventually those weeds will overtake your garden. Your, your, the thing that you took all that time, that energy, that love, that commitment on, it'll be taken over by your, you know, it'll be taken over by all those weeds. And uh, with social media, it is so much easier to feed your algorithm in the way you want it to be fed. And that's what social media is, is there for. It's to, to keep us distracted the longest. Every app focuses their time, their energy, their money, their resources to keep us on that app longer and longer and longer. It's just, it's just how social media is is built. And if you feed your algorithms in a certain way, that's all you end up seeing is that thing. So, you know, <clears throat> it's so much easier for someone to sit back and complain. You know, and, I, and I've been there too, so I'm not, I'm not stating that I'm perfect. I'm not stating I'm better than anyone else. I'm going to be honest, you know, I've been there too, where I just sat there and complained before. And sitting there and complaining, anyone can do. No matter, it's just, it's just the easiest thing to do. It's like those weeds in that garden. They're going to grow. They're going to, they're going to manifest no matter what, right? And that's how our thoughts are. Negative thoughts will manifest very easily complaining they, they're, they're just it's how society has molded us and formed us through fear through the news through you know just just things like that in sort and yes it feels good to complain yes it feels good to sit there and just bicker and argue about things but you know what even feels better is coming up with the solution so whatever you're complaining about doesn't need to be claimed complained about anymore you know and that is where the real growth and the true you know happiness comes from when you can come up with a solution that makes the situation better than it was then it's a win for everyone. It's a win for that person that's getting that 
that feedback on and it's not more complaining so because it's it's constructive feedback when you can help create a solution that's when it becomes that that constructive feedback not just bickering and arguing and just complaining what most people do most people will just complain and never come up with a solution to help fix that that thing and even of even of of recently with with life events in uh, my own you know i've i've said things on comments to people and i've actually even brought up discussion and manners in our own community and it's not easy it's definitely not easy to bring up these things and i could just sit there and can complain about events that have happened or that are going to happen and do nothing about it i could just sit there and be a negative person and argue and just you know instead of coming up with solutions to fix that to you know to resolve that situation and it's with the things that we do after that of us speaking out that allows us to grow as well and it also allows us not to speak so quickly out of emotions and i can i can tell you what happened recently in the community um what's going on with me currently actually and not only myself but other people in the community but some of you know that you know pretendians and people pretending to be indigenous people and and pe- these people taking jobs away from non you know from indigenous people is a topic and it's a topic not everyone wants to talk about and it's a topic that some people kind of just ignore but when we ignore things eventually they they'll bottle up and you just explode and you can't take it anymore. And I'm, I'm, I don't like controversy. I don't, really, I honestly do not like controversy as much as the things I post. Um, it may seem like I like controversy. I don't, you know, I don't think anyone likes controversy. But the hardest discussions that, well, let's let's rephrase that. Some of the the discussions that are hard to do. Some of the hardest discussions you'll ever have are some of the best and most needed conversations that have to happen in order for that change to to go on. And the whole pretendian situation, some people have called myself and other people bullies. And it's it's not because our ancestors fought with their whole lives for us to be here today you know my my ancestors gave up their lives fighting with with other people and, and other indigenous peoples throughout turtle island they gave up their lives fighting for our traditions for our languages for our rights to be seen to be heard to be able to be a male and have long hair you know to be able to speak my language to other people to be able to suit up in my regalia and wear it in public spaces or wherever you know that 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 medicine is needed you know for me to put on my regalia and go and dance in spaces my ancestors fought for those things and I, and often I'll I'll tell myself you know you're your ancestors did they fought for us so we had these rights and if we just sit back and lay down and allow things to happen then their fighting was for nothing it was pointless of them fighting and with reconciliation it's it's about having spaces that we weren't allowed in 
It's holding spaces that our ancestors were denied. It's having these spaces and opportunities that our ancestors were never, you know, they, they never dreamed of having. And with recent events, there's this community powwow that's happening here in Vancouver in the Lower Mainland. And it falls on Mother's Day. So they call it Mother's Day, Mother's Day powwow. And the committee, from what I've seen after I've reached out to them, they're not very well informed on the traditions and actually where powwow has come from, where it's evolved from. You know, it, powwow doesn't come from every tribe on Turtle Island. You know, it, it comes from the plains and the prairies. And there's many stories of where it comes from. And you know, the stories that I've heard and I've read, it comes from a, a war dance from the Bosu people. And there was a there was a dance society, like almost like a grass dance society where these warriors would would have these bustles basically. But they were a drop style bustle. And uh, they would There'd be warriors in their society and they would upkeep and hold things in their communities. And these warriors would also go to war. When they would go to war or battle or hunt, they would wear these things. And it, and it allowed them to be able to maneuver and all these things. And then they would come back and dance in that victory, that celebration. And there were certain ways and certain songs that were sung that were danced. And, you know, it's been adopted by many indigenous communities all over Turtle Island, which is amazing, you know, which is great. It's a way of connecting people. It's a way of celebrating life. It's a way of bringing communities together, but there's still protocols and ways and things like that. And in one matter that is happening here is they have hired a, a non-indigenous person to basically run the whole power. And there are certain roles and and things that powers need for them to happen. You know, you have your master of ceremonies, your MC. You know, the person that's the voice of everyone that that kind of talks and lets people know what's going on. And you know, they they're just there to voice. You know what what the people want, the committee, the they're just a the voice. You know, they, they tell jokes, they keep people entertained, they're really good people, they're knowledge, they, they have a lot of knowledge and experience with, with these things and powwows. And then there's what is called either a whip man, which is a part of that society, that whip society, that, that old war dance ways, which is passed down differently. Sometimes it's passed down through family, through lineage, through you know ceremonies but you not everyone can have that title you know it's just given to certain people and that's what my grandpa was um, i remember him when i was younger i just remember when i was at powwows he would just have this different energy about him you know he was it was not so much of a a frightful fearing like a frightful energy like you had to fear him but it was more of like a, a warrior like a fierce strong presence with him when he was there and that was that society that he he was a part of and then you have your arena directors which most powwows have nowadays because that whip society is so small an arena director they run the whole powwow they, they say everything. Everything that goes on within that circle is their decision, their their ways, you know, the, the things that they've, they've been taught or learned through either ceremony or things like that are being kind of apprenticed by, by someone who has that knowledge. And any of these positions in a powwow, are meant for indigenous peoples. But this community, this committee from this powwow 
have decided to hire a non-indigenous person to work in these roles. And for any powwow now, these positions are paid. You know, the arena director is paid, the MC is paid because they're there basically, it's almost like a job because you're there the whole powwow, you're, as soon as you're, you're working before the powwow starts, you're finding your flag carriers, you're doing all these things, you're getting elders to come say opening prayers, you're helping with the peace pipe ceremony, you're happy, helping with the flag raising ceremonies, you're, you're doing a lot of things. And even after the powwow ends, the work isn't done because you still got to make sure the Eagle staff and all the flags are taken care of. And it's, it's a big role. And same thing with the master of ceremonies, the MC, you're there before the powwow, you're talking, you're, you know, you're teaching people teachings and you're you're there and you're just sharing your knowledge and your your laughter and your good medicine with people so these these roles are always paid now which is good because you know you're, you're you put a lot of time and energy into these spaces and they they hired a non-indigenous person and when i saw that in my gut it didn't feel right you know it didn't sit right with me so i, I spoke up well, I didn't. Sp I spoke up and I said something on the poster, and other people in the community kind of saw this, and they started to, to comment as well. And people were saying, "What? What's going on? Like that's that's not right. You can't do that." And this was after um, a youth and a younger Indigenous person was actually asked to do this job, and then they turned him down. You know, that 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 kind of was like what the heck like hold hold the phone like hold up like you, you do all these things that that's not right and i question them and people are trying to say that are related to this man they're the people that are related to this man are indigenous you know he's he's married into an indigenous family but yet these people were slandering other non-indigenous people for taking roles that weren't meant for them and were meant for indigenous people. You know, it has to be clear across the field. And so the other night, actually it was last night, I was asked to, to join the committee and discuss this, to bring this, this thing up. And it's, if you've ever been in confrontations before, for most people, it's not easy to to voice how they feel. You know, most people will just not say a thing. They'll just kind of shut up and put their head down. But I, but I, I don't, and I didn't, and I voiced my opinion, and it basically fell on deaf ears. Even though I took the time out of my, my day to address this, you know, I was putting forth um, a solution because I, but I, so I brought up some names who were actually indigenous. I said, why don't you hire that indigenous youth that was asked before? You know, I was bringing up solutions with it. I wasn't just going there to complain, just to complain. I went there for a reason to to resolve this, to try to figure a solution out, but it just fell on deaf ears. And it got to the point where I didn't even feel heard. So I just basically hung up on the Zoom and left, which is a statement in itself. You know, that just shows that what I'm talking about, I truly care about. I'm not just saying something to, to complain because I'm not like that. I'm not a person who just complains to complain. I would rather complain and find a solution. I would rather have that constructive criticism. Let's not call it complaining because complaining we've, we've dealt with that and we've understood that it's just harping and bitching and moaning just to hear our own voices. Constructive cr criticism is coming up with a solution to fix it, to move on with a better future, to make everyone feel better about it and anything can go on in your life as well where you where you want to complain trust me that the weeds in your mind will flourish no matter what 
you're, you're gonna get you're gonna have a spot where you want to complain about something but just remind yourself hey if i'm not bringing up a solution with this what is my ultimate outcome for me complaining you know is this is it even worth it or am i just wasting energy and time on these things and that's a good question you can ask yourself when you're about to speak you know sometimes you when i'm about to say things or do things or t i know when that anger arises in me now and i don't allow myself to act on that and I don't come off on a hateful way and I don't come off on a way where I'm trying to not encourage people to become the best versions of themselves. But I'm also trying to come up with solutions to fix these matters with it. So it's, it's good for growth. <sighs> That's all I got to say. So for this week, I challenge you, it's going to be a hard challenge this week to think before you, you text or type or post or say something. If you know it's a little bit negative or quote unquote negative or it's, it's, it's complaining, ask yourself, okay, so how are we going to fix this solution as well? What can we do to make it better than it was before it came into it? What can we do to make it better? Ask yourself that. And that changes the whole narrative of your mission of saying whatever you got to say or doing whatever you got to do. So with that, I'm going to end this podcast. Have a great week. Um, enjoy the sun if it's sunny wherever you're at. Challenge yourself to ask these questions. Take, you know, be more mindful. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Sukuni for tuning in. Dagas. And remember, everything always happens for the right reasons. Take care. All my wealthy warriors. <laughs>